All right, welcome back, guys. Uh, this is going to be a little bit off pace with what I've been doing for my ice fishing videos as of lately. Uh, I just remembered I had a video that I was intending to like redo for somebody, uh, well, for everybody, because it corresponds with my other video, which I'll link up here. It's uh, basically how I went by building my um, my aluminum fishing boat. I have a 14 foot. Uh, it's like a 1980s aluminum fishing boat. I think it's a Miracraft. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but I have like the I have the video I talked about it, but I didn't do like a build up video. I did like a slideshow, and it was basically for myself a long time ago. So like I had that video. It was like 90 seconds long, and it just kind of did an overview so I could remember how I did it. With this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break that down and actually kind of point out what I did and why and where I did uh, to correspond with my actual like how to build a you know good fishing boat video, the one I linked above. So hopefully this helps you guys build your boats uh, pretty easily. And I know it's like the middle of winter and I'm getting downpoured on right now. Uh, we have no snow, no ice. I've been traveling like two to three hours to go fishing uh, and film ice. So uh, yeah, upside is there's a cold snap coming and I think we're gonna be able to get out on ice in like the next week here. I have another video coming out this Wednesday. This video will come out today. It's gonna be short and kind of, you know, simple. I want to make it so you guys can just watch it and understand what's going on. Uh, enough of me talking. Here, let's get into the video. Okay, so this section here is me showing that I pulled out the middle seat and I added the ratchet strap beforehand to keep the boat from flexing out. Alright, this scene's missing a lot of information, but that's a full piece of plywood that I carpeted. I put the supports in order to fit just underneath where the seat mounts. Okay, so this section here is like an, a before picture of what you've seen before, but it gives you the easy understanding that like... The front seat actually has the board underneath it, and I made those supports so that I could put the middle seat back in place. This just kind of shows you what it looks like without the middle seat, but the board and carpet just overlap the front seat by like two inches. The middle seat actually sits on the carpet, and the back part of the board actually sits just underneath the back seat. This was just a quick reminder to myself as to how I ran the transducer for my LX7 uh, fish finder that I actually use in the winter. Okay, so this actually takes a little bit of explaining. That front board is sitting on that small front step style seat. Uh, that is a 2x6, I believe, but I used 1x1s in order to do the framing. And the first board you see in line with the seat is actually screwed on with, uh, I, I don't even know what you would call them. The, I used washers as my brackets to hold the board in there in place properly. Otherwise, it is as it looks. Okay, so after all the framing is done, I went ahead and got myself a big piece of cardboard and laid it over that section. I also cut out of the center pieces of that cardboard where I wanted my hatches to be laid out, thus creating myself a template to lay down on a piece of wood, which that actually ended up being a 8 foot piece of plywood sideways.
Okay, something I kind of messed up myself on when I was taking these photos was to get the photos of the upright supports going down to the H. You can see the piece of plywood sitting down there on the cross member from the support. I didn't have to add much though because that front seat ended up being more of a support than I thought I would need. Those back uprights you see are actually for just a simple platform down there for me to store my battery on for my trolling motor. Okay, so the front part here takes a lot of explaining. It was a very tedious section. I don't want to lie to you guys. If you want it to look like this, it takes a lot of work. For instance, I didn't have it screwed in before. That was just placed in, in, in its spot so that you could look at it and see to make sure everything fit together. Those cutouts for the center boards were carpeted separately. The main section was carpeted separately. You have to understand how to cut carpet properly to get it to lay like it did. I am lucky enough that I've worked with carpet for a long time, so that was pretty easy. But as far as like getting everything laid out, make sure it all fits. Make sure it looks right first before you start carpeting and making the final pieces put in place. Okay, so as you can see how the carpet's overlapped and stuff on the board separately and how the hatches are reinforced that's kind of the easiest way to show you guys how it looks okay so this was just a mock-up photo nothing is actually attached here but this is the way the layout of my stuff is that board supporting the trolling motor up front is actually screwed into the main rail not the body or anything um, it's in a place where another board had already been so there were already holes in the rail to place the seat is drilled through from the plywood through the actual seat into the plywood of the actual seat of the boat so that is attacked well okay guys so I really hope that helps you guys out I know it's a voiceover thing but I really wanted to make sure that you guys could see what I'm talking about while I'm talking about it and it's the easiest way to do it uh, the first thing I wanted to make sure everyone understands the framing that you guys see throughout the boat none of it is actually attached to the boat I made it so that it was wedged underneath the seats so that that's what holds it in um, by doing that you don't have to build any kind of special brackets or weld anything or nothing like that. Plus, if I wanted to tomorrow, I could go out to my truck or my boat and tear everything out of it and redo it if I wanted to. And it wouldn't take much. You just pull the seat out in the middle and pull everything apart. That's why I did it that way. The front uh, platform that you guys see for my trolling motor seat is actually screwed to that seat. And I figured... It already had holes in it, so I didn't care if I wanted it to be, you know, fresh underneath there. When I pull it out, if I have to, I can fix the seat. But otherwise, that is a very rigid platform. Um, it is not attached to the frame, but what I did is I built that, uh, the ribbing that you see go come off of it in the angles. That, that ribbing is attached to the seat by, I put a one by one across the seat, and I attached it directly sideways into the seat. Like the front of the seat's got like a one inch lip to it. And I attached it to that by drilling through with the pilot hole. So if you guys don't know what that is, uh, pilot hole is just a smaller, uh, smaller drill bit than your actual screw that you use. And the thing is, is underneath that aluminum is actually a board. So when you screw it in there, it screws through the aluminum and into the board. So that's two things it's got a good grip on. So that's how I built the platform. And then, like I said, up in the very front of the nose, where you see that little aluminum seat, that is actually just sitting on there. So by attaching it to the top of the seat and the front of the seat, that is literally just sitting out there. But the thing is, is the way I built that so tightly, and I, like I said, I used a, a big piece of cardboard. You can go to like, uh, how, like home improvement stores or like places that sell giant appliances and get a box and then you just open it up and trace it out. And I learned that a long time ago in fabricating stuff that if you make a trace of it, you can literally lay that down, trace that out on your board, cut it out, and it's really close. Like, I think I might have had to do a few small little hairline cuts to make it fit perfectly in there. And by doing it that way, it's so tight that that 
that's been built like that now for three years, three or four years. And I mean, I beat my vehicle or I beat my boat up a lot. And I mean, you you shouldn't do that. You should take care of your stuff. But I, I, I don't care if it's rough water, I'll go out fishing. Uh, you just have to know how to handle yourself. And I don't recommend anybody that's inexperienced go out in rough water. It can be very dangerous. But a lot of times that's when the fish are biting. So uh, I hope this really helps a lot of you guys out. Um, I wanted to make this video a lot better than it was. I know a lot of people were watching it in correspondence to my other video. And then like I said, I'll put it at the end of this video so you guys have uh, the two links um, so you can get back to the other video that actually kind of goes over everything and why I did what I did. Uh, other than that, this is the this is the skeleton. This is how you build one, and it's a fort. Like I said, it's a 14 foot mural craft, and it's a it's their deep fisherman, I believe. It's a deeper V. So if you look at the sides of the boat, it's got three of those uh, steps on the side of the ribs versus two, which allows me to go in a lot better water. So if I, if you guys find them, I highly recommend getting those for a starter boat. I got it for a really good deal, uh, and that's probably my best starter boat that I've ever. Been able to get it. Well, it's my only starter boat. Uh, I hope to upgrade from there in the near future, but until then, this is going to be my baby, and I'm really glad to help you guys get your own going. And I hope you guys get out on the water. So, like I said, if you guys uh, aren't new here, you know what's up. But if you're new here, please just remember to.